Conditional quality about the, absolutely the, and, and a conditional quality about right the very good we are human beings mm -hmm. the human is conditioned totally by the past total memory and most people live and die never experiencing anything but okay mm -hmm. and then there is unconditional state that is not conditioned it's unborn that's beautiful it's it's unborn experience and it shows first in, in when life is coming into fruition, when life is beginning, the child experiencing this unborn state still there because it's still unconditioned, and the little kitten and puppy, you see, so they have this this joy, this 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 pure essence still with them. So this is unconditioned, and then we become conditioned. Now the conditioned state is part of yeah. I Maybe you misunderstood me a little bit. I meant unconditional, not conditioned or unconditioned. Isn't it the same? Well, no. I, I think really? I, yeah. Well, to me, uh -huh. it's different to me. But to okay, me, I, explain to me to the me, difference. Unconditional means um, mm -hmm. with no regard to any consequences whatsoever. I think in, in the personal realm, mm -hmm. one is always sort of looking mm -hmm. a little bit into the future, mm -hmm. you know, to sort of take care of things or, or manage mm -hmm. things or, mm -hmm. or um, somehow manipulate things. But I think in, in the unconditional way that it does, there's absolutely no, no regard. No. None. No, because at that moment there's no conditioning. Yeah. So okay. they're both the same. So both the same. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't. No, no, this is wonderful. Well, I'd rather, I'd rather explore like this. Okay, this is great. We have to keep on exploring it. Sometimes we think that they are different, but they're not. And, and this, is, this is what I would like to emphasize here, that the personal experiencer, they take everything personally. And the reason you take everything personally is because that's all you know. Right? Initially, that's all we know. This is why they say, first there's tragedy, because we're, we're still in teenage years we want, we need, we, we, we have a strong ego. Can, we, can it happen? No, of course not. There, those are growing pains, growing years. You know, and then we, we learn to put up with it. We learn to cope. The drama goes on. You see? We still don't understand, but at least it's not tragedy anymore. It's just drama. Okay? But to, to, to go back to uh, where, where I was, yeah. Um, what was that again? Unconditioned. Yeah. Yeah, okay, now I was going to say something, something different. So, yeah, so the, so the conditioning is not wrong. It is coming from a blessed state, a, a, a state of great love. This is what the conditioned is. Okay? Now you might say, you mean the conditioning to fear? Yes. Do you know that fear always keeps on repeating as long as you're trying to get rid of it? But if you experience it, you experience pure state. Now, how many people have experienced pure state by wanting to? None. Okay? None. People have prayed and chanted and, and done tapas. Not, not tapas, maybe, but, but a lot of... Um, a lot of... Uh, what, what, is, what is that? Uh, Self-torture in order to experience their pure state, and it never succeeded. And then all I had to do was experience their greatest fear and allow it. And the moment they wanted to know what is deeper than, than, than this, the moment they went deeper into it, they experienced their pure state. Did you know that anybody that's awakened, anybody that experienced their total absolute state, they went through shock in the beginning. They realized that they're not who they thought they were. And we go through different shocks. Uh, for example, today I was re-watching, you know, and it, it touches me deeply every time I see Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi and uh, Devaki, who came last Thursday. She gave us a, a DVD of Ramana Maharshi, and it was done so beautifully. And it says how, when he was young, at 16 years of age, he experienced this great fear of death, and how he allowed himself to experience it fully. And, and he experienced it so completely 
that all the conditioning in him, all conditioned states, left. It's very rare, of course. This, this happens one in a billion, you know. And, and he was totally pure in his pure state and remained that way for the rest of his life. And they said that the, all they had to do was look into his eyes and one glance, glance into his eyes, they began to experience their pure state. But what happens, you might say, but the people who experience the pure state from Ramana Maharshi's gaze, how does, it, how does it happen? Isn't that suffering in the beginning? Yes. Because the first thing when you look into a, a, someone like Ramana Maharshi's eyes, the first thing you become aware of is how busy your mind is, how busy you really are, how conditioned you really are, and, there's a, and then there's a moment where it doesn't matter. You experience it and allow it. You see? And there is that melting. But the first thing is looking at the conditioned state. Because it is the, the stairway, you see, that, that goes up. So when we allow ourselves to experience our greatest fear, whatever that happens to be, maybe death, maybe cancer, maybe a personality problem, it doesn't matter. Okay, whatever it is, when we face our greatest fear and we stay with it totally, and it's the only way to reach pure state, there is no other way to reach pure state. You see, many have been tried. There are so many religions and so many programs that give you practices, but this is, this is an impeccable way when you begin to go into that fear itself. And as you go into that fear and experience it, the first thing that comes with that fear, what, what comes with that fear? The conditioning surfaces, the stories that come with it, and the concepts surrounding it. Now, when you stay with it beyond the story and the concepts, you just stay with it because you want to be now. The stories exist in memory, they exist in the past. The, um, the, the concepts that exist from the past, but now there are no concepts and no stories. And you stay just with what you're experiencing now, totally. You stay with it totally. And as you stay with it totally, you begin to reach a neutral point. And you might, you might come to a point where you experience darkness, yeah. In fact, the more you experience darkness, the more light you experience after. Now, this is not only um, an old teaching of, you know, uh, of people who have reached higher and deeper knowing, but also I'm, I'm going through from what I've been experiencing with my own clients. I call it, this is an experience that I, I apply. I call it super sentience, but the same thing. Okay? Yeah. Fully understand. I understand the theory because I've heard a lot too that you know that the, the capacity for darkness equals the capacity for light. But Not the capacity for light. It depends upon how you, your feeling of darkness leads to capacity for light. It, it, see, see, we have to go back to the personal self, okay? To the personal um, uh, what we said, uh, experiencer. So if the experiencer is feeling great pain, but they know that there's something deeper and they want to experience, or maybe their teacher told them to do this, and they do it, and they stay with it, then to the extent that they're suffering becomes the extent of their release, of that release. But it's... So it's, it's, it's the extent of the desire for the truth. But show me a person who has no desire for truth, who goes through their fear and do nothing about it There's no and stay. Incentive otherwise. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. We take it for granted that anybody that comes to satsang loves truth or wants truth. Mm -hmm. You see? You know. You cannot tell this to the, to the populace. They, they'll go to a psychiatrist or they'll take drugs. You see? Which all you learn are how to cope. Or take spiritual drugs. Or take spiritual drugs which is called fascination. Mm -hmm. Okay, with occult powers, or with miracles, or with this, or with that, you see. But the, the, the thing is always to lead people back to love of truth. Jesus performed many miracles, 
Okay, because 2,000 years ago, people were not very brilliant, they were not very bright, and they were very poor people. So he showed them that in order to bring them back. And he told them that the kingdom of God is within you now. You see? And so, anyway.